going to get started with another guy who's been blowing people away, Robert Easter Jr. It takes place in the lightweight division, and it's Robert Easter Jr. who comes out of Toledo, Ohio against Hardy Paredes. Well, Barry Easter may be a lightweight, but he's got a light heavyweight's reach. Six inch height advantage, eight and a half inch reach advantage. And let me give you some really keen, shrewd analysis. Paredes has to get inside to be effective. Very good. Thank and you. that's absolutely the point. That's what he said he's going to do. Doing it maybe a little bit easier said than done. Let's talk about the rules. Uh, the ABC rules, unified rules, no standing eight, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the fight is officially after four. If it doesn't go four, it's a no decision. All right, big night of boxing here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. We are set to go. Our first fight of the evening. And for the introductions of the fighters, we take it to the center of the ring and the inimitable. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas for Showtime Extreme and our big night of action brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions in association with Leha Bata Promotions and Showtime. We are sponsored by Corona, AT&T, Grudge Match, and Casamingos Tequila. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside, all from the state of Texas. Ruben Carrion, former world title challenger Ruben Castillo, and Joel Elizondo. A referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Lee Rogers. All right, fans, here we go. Eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the lightweight division. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, joining us from Osorno, Chile. He weighed in at 135 and one half pounds. His record stands at 16 wins, 12 losses, with 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Hardy Paredes. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this eighth round attraction. Wearing white trunks with red trim, fighting out of Toledo, Ohio by way of Cincinnati. He weighed in at a ready 133 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of seven wins, no losses. All seven wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the undefeated Robert Easter. Junior. A referee in charge once again. Now to give instructions, Lee Rogers. What does he want me to call him? His name, first name. Uh, Harvey. 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 Robert, you got your instructions in the dressing room. Okay, we're looking for a tough, clean fight. Best of luck to both of you. Let's touch them up. So we are set to go. Our first fight of the evening, Robert Easter Jr. And uh, not much you could say about what he's done. Everything's been right. Seven fights, seven knockouts. Never gone more than three rounds. Done everything right so far. Yeah, and this is a, a standard test for a prospect. 12 rounds total for Easter so far. But he's fighting Paredes, who has 157 rounds as a pro. So here we go, round one of this scheduled eight-round fight. And it is incumbent upon Paredes to get inside, and you saw the long jab of Easter, so as we mentioned earlier, it could be easier said than done. Yeah, having watched Paredes, he likes to step laterally more than come forward, so this could be a tough style matchup for him. And Easter likes to fight a little bit too much, given that he's a six foot lightweight, you'd think he'd be happy to stay on the outside, but sometimes he mixes it up on the inside. Against this opponent, he probably could keep an arm's length and not get hit at all. He probably could. I, he gets rave reviews out of the guys in the gym, the guys that he spars against as a, as a real coming Stop! prospect. Get away, get away, get away. Left hand. No knockdown, no knockdown, I do have him. Paredes' gloves did touch the canvas, but it was ruled by Lee Rogers to be more of a slip. Nice short little uppercut and a left hand behind it by Easter. Pick him up, Harvey. Pick him up. You can see the evident reach advantage. You talked about it of Robert Easter. 
And now's the test for Easter's patience because he landed a couple of power shots. So does he abandon the jab or, and go for a quick knockout or does he stick with the game plan? And he seems to be content to continue to jab. Nice left hand, he turned that one. Midway through round one. Paredes was in with a former world champion in his last fight. He's also fought Terrence Crawford, who's maybe the best young American lightweight, one of them. So this is a good test this early in Easter's career. Yeah, Paredes was stopped in his last fight, but he said he had excuses. He had back problems coming into the fight. And that little segment we saw there, that's where Easter has to be careful because he's trading hooks with Paredes. Good body shot there. He doesn't need to trade hooks in close. But he thinks he has his man hurt and ready to go, and that's why he's trying to put, put a big hurt on him. I don't know if Paredes is indeed that hurt. Double left hand, left to the body, dropped him. Clean shot. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That's Over. it, That's Just it. like that. He talked to us about his body work. It's a beautiful combination, Barry. You called it right. It was a hook upstairs and then a hook to the liver. And since Paredes went two rounds with a former world champ, his last fight, and Easter took him out in one, I guess this is a success for Easter. I, I would think so. I didn't notice that he did anything wrong. Very sharp punches, had a nice crisp jab. Doubled up on almost all his punches in that last combination. Well, that was the end of it. Yeah, you'd like to see a veteran like Paredes extend Easter a little bit. Uh, that's probably why he was chosen as an opponent. It didn't happen. And Easter, uh, not, not his fault. But certainly a guy we're gonna see again, I have no doubt. Yeah, he's got the big amateur background. He was an Olympic alternate in 2012 and 230 amateur fights. All right, we're going to get a chance to see that double left hand once again. Sometimes the hook to the body sets up the hook to the head. Here it's in reverse. Hook, body, and out. And he spit out. You see the mouthpiece or the gum shield on the canvas there. That was a sign that it didn't matter what the referee counted to. Paredes was not getting up. Very effective performance. You see it again, just looking at the reach advantage that, that Easter has. And you could say he set it up with the right hand as well. And now he knows his opponent's on the ropes. There's nothing Paredes has to scare Easter there. And he picked the right punch because that uh, there was a clear avenue for that left hook to land. And one last look. You'd like to see Easter keep that left hand up when he's punching in combination, but now he's going to use it. And Paredes protecting the chin. So what do you do? Look at how big a target that is. Ow. Clean, perfect, over. I think that says it all, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did not even require a count. Well, one fight, one minute, one victory. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it official. Did I get Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 30 seconds in round number one. A referee in charge reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, Robert Easter Jr. Well, very impressive. I don't know what you could say uh, but that and uh, his career still perfect. Eight fights, eight knockouts, never gone past three rounds. And this one, an impressive shot to the body that dropped his opponent for keeps. Yeah, eight fights for Easter and a total of 13 rounds. Yeah, he's going to get the rep as a puncher, although obviously the quality of opposition uh, has to improve.